Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. I have this brushless motor. And I have this planetary gearbox. This gearbox is quite cheap and it's made for the stepper motor. But we will try to mount brushless motor on this gearbox. So let's get started. I have three planetary gearboxes. So one has a gear ratio of 10, gear ratio of 30 and gear ratio of 40. And all these gearboxes are actually made for the stepper motors like this one and it has the same holes which match these holes uh, on the reducer and so they goes like this but today we are not gonna use the stepper motor because this is not interesting today we're going to use a brushless motor which is more powerful and faster originally this reducer comes with a ceiling uh, ring over here the black one and i found out that this rubber ring it creates a lot of friction so i dismounted it so here it's dismounted and now i can rotate the output shaft easily by hand so today i'm going to use the gear ratio of 30 why 30 because it's just in between 40 and 10 somewhere in between so let's take this one fortunately the input shaft uh, is made for the shaft of the five millimeter diameter and this motor has exactly five millimeter diameter shaft so they can go one to another and uh, we have only 8.5 millimeter distance between uh, the planetary gearbox and uh, the brushless motor so in this uh, 8.5 millimeter, we should uh, fit uh, the fixation for the motor and also the encoder. That's why my fixation for the motor should be as thin as possible. So I made this metal plate out of the stainless steel. It's uh, quite strong and it has a thickness only one millimeter. So this means that in our gap, of 8.5 millimeter one millimeter is gonna be taken by this plate and it left 7.5 millimeter for the encoder so this is the encoder which I'm going to use and this encoder has two main parts this one with electronics and this one is support and together they have a thickness of 9 millimeter so this is too thick for our application so I'm going to throw away this uh, support and I'm going to use only this electronics which has a thickness of uh, 7 millimeters and uh, to fix this electronics I'm going to use a 3D printed part. So this is an adapter which I 3D printed for this encoder. The encoder goes inside like this. It's actually quite good fit and so the encoder with the support goes like this this metal plate goes on top and the motor goes here so now we need to assemble it and uh, I will start with uh, fixing the motor on this metal plate to fix this metal plate on the motor I'm going to use these small screws with uh, this uh, conic uh, head and like this they're gonna take less space Now I need to fix the color for the encoder. So it has two parts. So now it's fixed. And we can see how the encoder fits. Looks quite good. I also filed a little bit two screws because uh, otherwise they don't fit here and here because the casing of this encoder is just a little bit larger than the distance between these two holes so this screw is going here and uh, I have the same one which will go here now I can fix the first gear I can fix the first gear on the shaft of the motor just need to be sure that it's all the way in Now let's try to put all these together. Now I need to put the nuts 
and the main assembly is gonna be finished. And here is uh, the assembled actuator. So reducer, encoder and motor. Everything looks fine and when I rotate the motor the output shaft is also rotates. It sounds quite well like this so I don't hear any friction because I was afraid that I would have a friction inside the encoder because of the misalignment but I think it's aligned quite well. I also 3D printed this support and uh, I will use it to fix uh, this actuator. So now the actuator is fixed and it's time to test it. Now I need to take my O-Drive controller, connect it to the encoder, connect the motor and also connect the Raspberry Pi to control the controller. This is my O-Drive controller and it's connected to the 24 volts power supply. And this is my Raspberry Pi with the touch screen. Raspberry Pi is connected uh, to the O-Drive. Motor is connected to the O-Drive. And encoder is connected to the O-Drive. I should say that I slightly modified the cable for the encoder because the original cable does not uh, does not fit in uh, in uh, this uh, modified encoder so I cut it some parts on the connector and uh, it was quite obvious but now it uh, works well. And we are ready to launch the O-Drive tool but before I need to switch on the O-Drive. O-Drive tool is online and uh, the next thing which I should do is the uh, motor calibration. Okay, motor made this high pitch sound and it uh, rotates in one direction and in another direction. So now the motor is rotates freely. So I need to put the O-Drive in the closed loop control. So the command for this is the axis state closed loop control. The motor holds and now I can try to move it. So let's put the set point 1000. Okay, it rotates a little bit. Set point 10,000. Set point 100,000. I'm gonna hold it in case if it's gonna fly away. Okay. Set point zero. The output shaft rotates quite slowly. So let's try to increase the speed. But at least it works. This is already great. Let's put the velocity limit at 30,000. Set point 10,000. Oh, this is better. Set point zero. Velocity limit 100,000. Set point 10,000. Nice. Set point zero. Set point uh, 100,000. Ah, this is better. Set point zero. So now let's put the velocity limit at something higher than this, like uh, 200,000. Set point 100,000. This is better. Set point zero. Okay, let's increase the speed. So this is the speed limit uh, 400,000 and let's go to the set point 100,000. So let's see how it works. Oh, this is like super fast <laughs> and super great. Let's go to zero. Let's go to the 200,000. Zero. I even feel the wind from the motor with my hand. Works great. And it's quite silent. I really like this. So when I put it on the table, it vibrates with the table a little bit. And that's why it makes uh, more noise. Great. I think this is success. So today we built this small assembly with the brushless motor, planetary gearbox and encoder in between. This is very compact and this is does work. So I really like it. I think it could be used in uh, a lot of different projects. And all this was possible thanks to my patrons. Here are their names. Thank you guys. If you would like to support my channel, you can do this either through the Patreon or through the PayPal, all the links in the description to this video. 
If you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe to my channel because next time we're gonna build some other amazing stuff. And also don't forget to share this video on your social media. And also don't forget to subscribe to my Instagram channel, etc, etc, etc. So see you next time. Robotic revolution is coming, guys. And girls.